Good evening and welcome to Medical Talk. I'm your host, Betty Lamar. Today we are doing part two of a series of shows as it relates to your heart health. And we all know how important your heart health is. I have back with me again, Dr. Cabra. He's an electrophysiologist, a cardiologist. Good evening, Dr. Cabra. how are you? I'm doing good, Betty. Thank you very much for having me on the show. Okay, well, you know, you're welcome, because today, you know, we're going to talk about cardiac arrest, and uh, you don't know how many people are waiting to hear about cardiac arrest, uh, because we do have, seem like an epidemic of, of heart disease in our community. But before we get started, just tell our viewers a little bit about Dr. Cabra as it relates to our topic of discussion this evening. Sure. Uh, so... I'm Rajesh Kabra. I'm a cardiac electrophysiologist, and uh, I work at a, uh, I work with uh, UT Methodist practice. I'm also a, a faculty uh, and uh, associate professor with University of Tennessee. So, being a cardiac electrophysiologist, I specialize in heart rhythm conditions, heart rhythm diseases. Uh, so. So thank you for inviting me again. Um, this is a very, very important topic uh, which we are going to talk about today. Okay, well, good. Well, uh, uh, for those of you that I don't know who would not have seen the first part one, but on part one, we talked about AFib. And everybody knows now AFib is all about the rhythm of the heart. So my question today, uh, being that we're talking about cardiac arrest, what is sudden uh, cardiac arrest? Sudden cardiac arrest is a condition when the heart stops beating abruptly and without any warning symptoms. So a patient might be sitting, chatting, and all of a sudden you would notice the person to be on the floor, unresponsive, not breathing. That's how sudden it is. It's important for the heart to beat in order for blood to be circulated to rest of the body and imagine the condition when the heart stops beating the brain and all the vital organs they stop receiving any blood supply if this is not corrected within few minutes that person can die from cardiac arrest okay so what are the signs and symptoms of cardiac arrest how would you know if somebody pass out on the floor how do you know it's cardiac arrest versus just they fainted? Because I've always wondered, that's, how do you that's, know? That's, that's a great question, uh, Betty. So when a person suddenly collapses, you don't know what's going on. I think one of the most important things is when you see this happening, you don't waste a minute, you call 911 immediately. Then, th then you can look at uh, what's going on with that person. Now, if you see that person is totally unresponsive, uh, if that patient, that person is not even breathing, that's, that's sudden cardiac arrest. Oh. So, so I think for, uh, in, in, in common, uh, a common scenario will be a person suddenly going down. So there can be different reasons why that person passes out, but sudden cardiac arrest remains the most life-threatening cause. So I would say anytime you see a person fall down, suddenly unresponsive, take it to be cardiac arrest until okay. proven otherwise. Okay, well, before a person, as you would say, would fall down, collapse, what signs, or would that person have any signs preceding the actual collapse? So that's a great question. So by definition, sudden cardiac arrest uh, includes those patients who don't have any warning symptoms at all. So they are talking, sitting, and all of a sudden they, they go down. However, uh, there has been a recent study, and it's interesting you uh, bring this up. There, there's a recent study which was just published in Annals of Internal Medicine uh, this January, where they looked at patients who've had sudden cardiac arrest for a period of 10 years in Oregon. And they found that, uh, and, and they interviewed uh, those patients if they had survived or their relatives, looked at the hospital records, and they found that almost 50% of them had some or the other symptom related to the heart 
for the 24 hours prior to their episode and some of them even had symptoms uh, just before going down. Uh, in, in women, the common symptom was uh, shortness of breath. In men, the common symptom was uh, chest pain. So, so by definition, we say sudden cardiac arrest doesn't have any warning signs or symptoms. But, but, but that study did tell us that in the preceding few hours, about 50% of patients might have some symptoms. Okay, and as we spoke about on part one, you know, people ignore. Uh, signs and symptoms. Oh, it could just be a little heartburn or right. I'm just tired. Right. Um, so we do need to, when you, as you said before, if you think something is wrong, right. just make sure it's not, just right. be sure. R right. And the interesting thing was those patients who paid attention to their symptoms, who called 911 and, and had cardiac arrest or, or somebody called 911. So those patients who reported their symptoms, 30% of them survived, but if the patients did not seek medical attention, only 6 out of 100, only 6% of those patients survived. So it's, it's very lis important to listen to your body, but, uh, uh, but, but, but I think all said and done, it's very important for us as a society to be aware of this condition so that if, we, if it happens to anyone in a public place, uh, people are ready to think about it, to act on it, to call 911 and, uh, and, and thereby improve potentially the survival of that person. Okay, so how long, you know, because when you call 911, you know, it's, it's still a process. Right. So how long can a person actually be down and survive, you know, while you're waiting on the 911 and for someone to get there, especially if the person there doesn't know how to right. perform CPR. Right. So uh, generally it takes about four to six minutes before death uh, kind of starts uh, setting in or uh, there might be permanent damage to the brain and other vital organs. Mm -hmm. So uh, the American Heart Association uh, has uh, uh, endorsed uh, chest, chest compressions, just a layperson CPR where somebody effectively performs chest compressions about 100 to 120 times a minute while they are waiting for paramedics to show up. So that's part one which has shown to improve survival in those patients. The second part is if, if you are in a public places or in an airport, look out for automatic external defibrillator which are electronic devices and if they can uh, be placed on the patient timely, those are smart devices which can identify if that patient needs an electric shock mm. to get them back to normal rhythm because that's a life-saving shock. So I think the steps, uh, if I would summarize uh, uh, what we have discussed so far, if we see anyone going down suddenly, think of it as cardiac arrest. Okay. If it is not, then that person will wake up right. if it was just a fainting spell, okay. but, but activate 911 immediately. immediately. Yes. While you are waiting on 911, uh, start chest compressions on those pe uh, pe uh, people, uh, kind of center of the chest, 100 to 120 beats per minute uh, till the help ar uh, arrives. And if uh, there is any possibility of having a external defibrillator ask someone to get it on it's a very straight like it has very straightforward uh, directions which anyone can easily comprehend and uh, it's a very uh, user friendly device yeah okay because most people that i talk to when you they, they thought of it they would say the first thing they would do is just <laughs> you know just freak right. out right because i think when somebody falls like that you automatically think they're dead right. and you you i tell people are you panicking you're not really doing anything. So let me ask you this. Um, we're talking about risk factors. Who's at risk? And as always, I like to talk about the racial breakdown right. of, of diseases. Right. So who's at risk? We know of certain risk factors for cardiac arrest. Those are patients who have heart disease mm -hmm. in any form, who have had uh, uh, blockages in the heart, uh, who have heart failure, 
uh, who's pumping, the heart is not pumping well, who've had family history of heart diseases. So, uh, so those are the patients at risk. But interestingly, Betty, of all the people who have sudden cardiac arrest, two thirds of them have no known heart disease. Mm. So, so when you ask uh, who is at risk, well, people with heart disease, with uh, high cholesterol, high blood pressure, all of them are at risk. But, but two thirds of the patients don't have any known heart disease and they still go on to have cardiac arrest. Wow. Well, that's scary. It is scary. Yeah. And, that's, and it goes back to the point you made, if a person collapse, just because you don't know, treat it as right. though it is because more than likely right. it is. More than likely it is uh, because if you look at the statistics, we lose a life every 90 seconds from sudden cardiac arrest. Really? Over the last year in the United States, there were about 350,000 deaths attributed to cardiac arrest. So it is alarming uh, the way this condition uh, kills people. Mm. Would the stress come into play at all? Well, uh, so I think uh, it might have some role, but, uh, but, but we really, many times we don't have an answer to what okay. the trigger might be. So, uh, so I think uh, uh, we, c we can kind of uh, again discuss what, are, what causes cardiac arrest. Mm -hmm. uh, stress can be a trigger, but what are the other things? So, I generally equate uh, the electrical condition of the heart to a house with electricity. Okay. So, think of cardiac arrest as the house losing its electric power. Till you get the electric power back, there is going to be no electricity and nothing is going to work there. Right. More than likely, you can restore the electricity by turning the power on in the house and by shocking this patient. So, this is an electrical malfunction of the heart where it just stops pumping and if it is not taken care of urgently permanent damage and death can ensue. Okay well what is I guess the question would be going back to the racial breakdown uh, how does cardiac arrest affect minorities versus other races? So uh, there have been some recent studies uh, there was a study last year uh, uh, in one of the leading uh, cardiology journals circulation again the same group from uh, Oregon so they compared the patients the African Americans with the patients of European descent the the whites they found that African Americans had a significantly higher risk of having cardiac arrest and the patients had cardiac arrest at a much earlier age than than the uh, the, com the the comparative group uh, of uh, white Americans. So, so that study kind of is alarming for, uh, for our uh, city uh, where we have a significant amount of uh, minority population. Mm -hmm. So, we do not know the exact reason for this difference, but it might be because of a higher incidence of high blood pressure, diabetes, heart failure in, in African Americans. Okay. Wow. <laughs> Well, I, I really should take care of myself because I, I think I'm, we all we all should uh, for, seriously. We all should, and that's one of the main reasons why I are produce and host medical talk because my health is my number one priority, and I want everyone else to feel that way. And I always tell people my platform is we're here to give everyone the power they need to make healthier lifestyle choices. We'll be right back uh, again with Dr. Carver, and we're talking about cardiac arrest. And when we come back, we're going to find out the difference between cardiac arrest and heart attack. If you are a medical professional, doctor, physician, psychologist, psychiatrist, and you would like to join me on Medical Talk, email me, Betty at thebettylamarshow.com. That's Betty at thebettylamarshow.com. Go to my website 
www.thebettylamarshow.com. We're back. Uh, thank you again if you're just tuning in. This is Medical Talk, and I'm your host, Betty Lamar. Um, this is part two of a series of shows that um, we're doing as it relates to your heart health. You know, God gave us one heart. You know, we have like two kidneys and two lungs, but we have one heart. And it is very important that we take care of that heart. It's very important. And I have with me Dr. Carbra. If you want to know anything about the heart, you definitely want to tune into part two and part three. Welcome back, Dr. Carbra. Thank you, buddy. Okay, now, what is the difference between cardiac arrest and heart attack? So, Many people get confused between the two entities. Uh, they think they might be the same, heart attack or uh, cardiac arrest. And I gave you the example of uh, house electricity, uh, which uh, when, the, when the electricity uh, shuts down, it's like having a cardiac arrest when the electricity of the heart shuts down. I would equate having a heart attack to having a plumbing issue in the heart. So if your drains get clogged or if the arteries or the blood vessels which supply blood to the heart mm -hmm. they get clogged that causes a heart attack so if that if the blood vessel gets clogged it results in injury to the muscles of the heart which are supplied by, by that uh, blood vessel and even that's an emergency because what you would want to do is by medicines or by procedures you would want to open up that blockage so a heart attack is a plumbing issue with the heart oh. while a cardiac arrest is an electric problem of the heart oh wow I didn't know that I'm going to ask you a question that most people probably would ask so I'm going to like they said maybe a, a, a stupid question but I guess no question is stupid to ask a doctor which one is worse so if you look statistically 95% of patients who have cardiac arrest die. Okay, and so I always thought heart attack was like the worst because I thought, I guess a lot of people are learning this tonight as I am, I thought it was all the same. I thought cardiac arrest mean your, your heart stopped which meant you just had a heart attack. So they're two separate things. I think that's the most common uh, misconception that a heart attack is same as a cardiac arrest. Now, heart attack can sometimes lead to cardiac arrest, but they are two different phenomena. One is a plumbing issue, which is heart attack, and one is an electrical issue. Cardiac arrest is the worst killer. The survival rate is really, really bad. Heart attack, you still have a window to act. In cardiac arrest, the patient will die in, in a few minutes if nothing is done. In heart attack, same thing can happen but generally uh, you have a longer margin it's only a part of the heart which is damaged uh, again it depends on where the blockage is okay. but but typically heart rate has a better survival rate than cardiac arrest okay so when people pass away and you you hear someone say well the person had a heart attack chances are they're just like me and most people that are watching the show they're thinking that the cardiac arrest, which may have been the contributing factor to that person dying, they just, right. we all call it a heart attack. Right, right. And uh, that's very true. When I talk to patients, because one of the uh, things we use for risk assessment to determine what is their risk of having a cardiac arrest is a family history. So when we try to go into family history, I'm very commonly told that uh, my uncle or somebody had a heart attack, okay? What exactly happened? Well, he went to sleep, he never woke up. So that's likely not heart attack, that's a cardiac arrest. Oh, okay. Wow, they're like still like twins to me though. I think when the heart stops doing what it's supposed right, to do right. to most people, right. that was a heart attack. Right. Okay, right. your heart attacked you. The thought of your heart attacking you is scary. It's like, I'm just going to turn on you and do it. But anyway, let's talk about this. Prevention, treatment, and diagnosis. So let's go into a little prevention. Is there anything a person can do to prevent cardiac arrest? So uh, there are different things which we all can do. 
have a good lifestyle, eat healthy diet, quit smoking, <laughs> regular exercise, maintain a healthy weight. So those things go a long way. The other things are uh, regular physical checkups, getting good control of your diabetes, high blood pressure, cholesterol problems. I think those things add up. And then kind of uh, just knowing your own risk, there are a lot of good online tools of sudden cardiac arrest risk assessment which factor in different things. And one of the things you may want to uh, communicate to your doctor is your family history. If somebody has had a heart disease or somebody died suddenly and unexpectedly, because many times these things are genetic in nature. Um, okay. So, like, you know, when we, uh, I'm one of those people that I always get my um, annual checkups and, and as a matter of fact, I had my annual last week up at the VA, but, so when you all check us, you know, and you get your, what you call it, your little scope thing? Right, stethoscope. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh -huh. and what are you, are you listening for the, the heart rhythm or, so what are you listening to? So uh, with the stethoscope, we uh, listen to the heart rate, like we check the heart rate and heart rhythm, and we also look for uh, any kind of murmurs, if there is a, a tight valve or a leaky valve, those are the things uh, pertaining to the heart that we, uh, that we look for. Uh, the other thing which I think I should mention is uh, one of the ways we also prevent uh, cardiac arrest is by implanting devices called defibrillators. But right now we generally use defibrillators for patients who have survived cardiac arrest because they are at a highest risk of uh, having another uh, episode in the future. So those are the patients we put a defibrillator in. And in, in the patients where the pumping function of the heart is low, uh, because that's again a risk factor for having cardiac arrest. But if you look at the population, as I stressed uh, before, two thirds of the population, they do not have known heart disease. So, uh, and they go on to have cardiac arrest. So while we try to use the tools we have, but still there is a lot of patient population out there who is unprotected and at a risk of having cardiac arrest. Wow, so it's like the luck of the draw, huh? Right. Okay, so um, how is cardiac arrest diagnosed other than the fall? Is there something that you all can like you said, when you use this, that, that, that's, what is it? Stethoscope. Yes, so uh -huh. when you use that, can you, can it be diagnosed from that exam or how do you know before the fall so in most cases? I think uh, uh, it's, it's impossible to know before it happens, but uh, uh, I think the best tool is, uh, is, is the story. So uh, a person doing good and all of a sudden they collapse, stop breathing. That's, that's cardiac arrest until proven otherwise. But how do we confirm? So the ways to confirm is uh, the paramedics, they put on EKG pads or put uh, uh, the defibrillator patches and they tell what is the heart rhythm. So most of the times the heart is in a totally irregular uh, haphazard rhythm, uh, which, uh, which uh, is the cause for cardiac arrest. Okay. So that's the, that's the confirmatory test, putting, in, putting on the defibrillator patches or EKG patches to see what is the heart rhythm. But for lay people uh, who don't have access to that, it's the person suddenly stops responding. Okay, chest compressions. Chest compressions is the best way to, uh, to improve their chances of long-term survival. Okay, and that's the area like the rib cage protects the heart basically, right? Is that the purpose of the rib cage? So rib cage uh, basically protects the heart and the lungs. Okay. And the heart is located on the left side of the chest. So, uh, so th there's a good technique for chest compression where you basically put the hand over the sternum and okay. do compressions. And uh, I would like to mention here, I just came across uh, 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 an article where they have, uh, uh, installed chest compression training centers, kiosks at airports. Really? So there are at least five or six airports including Atlanta, Dallas, 
where patients while they are switching their flights and stuff can go to the kiosk and learn the chest compression within five minutes. Uh, I, I think that's a very, very smart idea. I think they should be everywhere. I think right. they should put them in all the Walgreens right. and because people do need to know how to do that. Everybody right. because you can be sitting at home and a right. family member can collapse. Right. And while you run around the house screaming, right. somebody need to be doing some, some compressions totally right agree. away. Totally agree. So right I think away. the steps are call 911 mm -hmm. first because that's the number one, chest, uh, start chest compressions till they arrive uh, and, and then go from there. Okay, well, let's, uh, so we're uh, approaching uh, the end here and you know we're going to do this again because we can talk about the heart forever and ever and ever, amen, okay, until we get it right. Um, so what are um, treatment options for uh, cardiac arrest? Is there anything that can be done, like say like for a person have a cardiac arrest and they're one of the lucky ones that survive? So what do you all do to keep them, okay. to, to bring them back or, or keep them? I think the, the, first, the first thing first, uh, uh, Betty, is restoration of heart rhythm. Okay. So uh, doing CPR, shocking the patient uh, uh, to get them back to normal rhythm. From that point onwards, once the circulation is restored, brain becomes the priority. Uh, there have been a lot of studies and, at, uh, uh, and uh, there are centers uh, at Memphis, uh, including Methodist University Hospital, where we have developed a protocol, a hypothermia protocol, where the patients with cardiac arrest, uh, they are kept at uh, very low temperatures. The body is kept at low temperatures to uh, improve recovery of the brain. And uh, so, so we do that for, a, uh, for uh, a good period of time and then assess neurological recovery because brain is the most sensitive organ and there is a very high risk of permanent damage and once uh, we, we have a good neurological recovery and if things are fine then generally those patients uh, in those patients we check for different things what might have caused cardiac arrest in many patients we never find a reason and we call them cardiac arrest of unknown cause or idiopathic cardiac arrest and we end up putting in defibrillators in them uh, for secondary prevention so that in the future if they ever have it defibrillator can detect it and shock them out of it uh, without uh, anybody's help okay now there you have it dr carbra is definitely one of the masters I've had a wonderful show this evening and I've learned so much. I still have a million questions for him. So of course he will be back. And as you all know from part one, uh, Dr. Carbra uh, was honored recently in the Memphis Business Journal as one of the top 40 under 40s. I, I call him, you all know that. If you go to my website, I'm always Dr. Carbra, Mr. Top 40 under 40 and I'm so very proud of you and I thank you so much for joining me again on Medical Talk and this is a series so it means that he'll be back and when you come back Dr. Carver what are we going to uh, what part of the heart uh, we're going to call the heart health are we going to talk about so Betty there is a lot to talk about okay. and I think uh, we, we I, I'm, I'm, I'm very appreciative of all your initiative at uh, arranging this and uh, uh, I'm sure this show is making such a large impact to the healthcare in our community. So I, I'm sure we'll have a lot to talk about different heart diseases and how to keep our heart healthy and strong. That's good. That's really good. All right. Well, thank you all again for tuning in to Medical Talk. Again, I'm your host, Betty Lamar. My wonderful guest this evening, Dr. Carver.